Hey everybody and welcome back. So this is just a show and tell video and um, I want to show you my latest obsession which is world's smallest toys um, and they work most of them at least. This is the world's smallest etch -a sketch and as you can see you turn the knobs and look you can create pictures it's amazing this is just like the etch-a-sketch that was around in the 60s and 70s and it was a must-have toy for kids but now it's small which is really cool this is the world's smallest magic 8-ball in case you don't know, the Magic 8-Ball, like a Ouija board, is a is a toy designed to give you prophecies. Like a little plastic Nostradamus. It's here to tell you answers to troubling questions. Like, for example, why ever be a millionaire? And it says, ask again. And that means probably not. But... Um, you know, never hurts to ask. So, let's ask again. Will I be close to a millionaire? And it says, yes. So, that's good to know. Okay, I mean, that means I'll never be a millionaire, but I'll be close, and you know what? I'll be fine with that. This is the world's smallest glow room. Um... This was a must-have toy also from the 80s, I think, and uh, it was a toy that a kid could sleep with at nighttime, if he, and if he was scared, if he squeezed it, it would glow, and then he'd have an instant nightlight. That's why he's wearing a sleeping cap, because he's like, I'm always sleeping, I'm on the job, but if you need some security, you squeeze the belly, and whoop, I will glow, and I will scare away with a monster under the bed so like unfortunately this one's very small so if you're if you choose to sleep with this one number one you might lose it or uh, if you needed to deploy the light in case of you know a scare it's not a huge light because you're not gonna have a lot of visibility but that's okay the idea is still solid okay <sighs> what else um Oh yes, how could I forget? This is um, the world's smallest Gumby and Pokey. And um, this is very cool because I want to show you something. Um, you may not know that I'm a proud owner of the um, standard size Gumby and Pokey. Um, So, uh, now, so it's, it's really cool that I have the world's smallest Gumby and Pokey because now I, I just feel like another puzzle piece is in my, in the fabric of my life. It's just something I need to have. And as you can see, the detailing is really good. The paint application is really good. This works exactly the same articulation as the standard size Gumby and Pokey. So, this is a must have. I'm putting this away now. Um, next, I'd like to show you the world's smallest light bright. Let's uh, just show you what you get when you get this. You get a light bright. As you can see, uh, I didn't put the template in correctly, so the holes did not line up correctly. But nonetheless, I just stuck the pegs in because, you know, I'm just kind of an idiot. But I did, uh, if you, let me turn some lights down so you can get the full effect. Look at that. 
So um, there's a little drawer in the back where you can stow your other pegs and you also get uh, even more pegs in case you lose them. And you have several of these templates to create to create signs. Um, like I think that says hello. This is a rocket. Like a car. This is like whatever you want it to be. Um, I mean, imagination. There's a lot of imagine. Okay, butterfly. I would just use. I'd stick with the templates. I'd, you know what? Maybe these were backwards. Maybe it's not whatever you want it to be. Okay, um, a light bulb or balloon. I don't. An airplane. This is light bright. That's their the name of the product. A heart and a star. So. Um, Hours of fun. Just hit the switch and let's move on to the next item, which is the world's smallest Rubik's Cube. As you can see, this just works, first of all. See, it works. You can, uh, I haven't scrambled it up because I want to keep it pristine. I want this to always look like it's been solved. Because, um, just to show you, I've been working on this one for about 10 years, and every time I think I'm getting somewhere, I think, you know, I've got something going, I don't. I, I know there's a book on how to solve this. I'm going to keep working on it, but in the meantime, I'm keeping this guy just like that. Um... This, this, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to solve this. They may have to bury this with me. Okay. This is, yes it is, the world's smallest Tinker Toys. What are Tinker Toys, you ask? Well, if you grew up in the 60s, 50s, or 60s, and 70s, you would know exactly what these are. These are, um, they're, They're kind of like, um, use your imagination, make your own thing. Um, I mean, I, I mean, it was, uh, you could build animals or you could make a pointing arrow. You could make like a, an X, an insect. That's a dog. Okay, it says what it is. A, a dipping a dipping bird, a dog, a windmill, a merry-go-round, an arrow, a house, a swing set, a stick man, a pinwheel. There's a lot of... And, or, use your imagination. I mean, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do. I mean, these just fit into inside these little things. Well, I guess they fit through this part. You might have to use a little elbow grease to get. Oh, now they do. How about that? So you can just start creating, and you have lots of. Uh, small pieces. I mean, um, it's very cool. Uses your imagination. So, imagine, you know, you're back in the 50s. You open your stocking. Well, actually, this would not have been in a stocking because this is the miniature one. The original one was in a big can that was about the size of a oatmeal canister. 
So um, you would probably have that in a present. And then you would be like, the world is mine. And then you would just start making things. And you would probably, back in the 50s, go on to get a great job because you started life with creative toys. And unlike me, who I had action figures, so there wasn't a lot of imagination required. I just played with them. If I had something like this, I'd probably be doing a lot better right now. Um, the next thing I want to show you is, yes, Hot Wheels. Um, and you're thinking, well, that's cool, they made one. No, they didn't just make one. They made this one and this one. This one, this one, and even this sinister looking one with a skull and crossbones on it. I mean, these are great. They, look, the packaging looks like it, how it looked in the 60s. And you can take the Hot Wheel out, you can play with it, you can put it back in. This is a hard case. Not only that, there's more. Look, you see this? It looks like a tire, but this is actually the world's smallest replica of the Hot Wheel case that was produced when kids lived in the 70s, 80s. And if you open this, now originally this case would have accommodated all of these cars, but this case, because of well, I guess, uh, you know, actual, you know, physical limitations can only accommodate six of these Hot Wheels. These would have to be much smaller, but here's one. So when I purchased this case, it came with a complimentary Hot Wheel that was also an exclusive that was only made for this case. And it's this yellow car with a racing stripe and the engine block sticking out of the hood. But it also gives you a chance to look at the details of this, which are pretty good. As you can see, it's even got the tiny little writing on the bottom. And it would say, oh my gosh, can I actually read that? It has, it's so small, made in China, trademark, and... I guess it should be Mattel and it has 2018 that's all my old tired eyes can make out but nonetheless it's cool it's heavy it's quite heavy it's made out of metal it's sturdy this is not plastic it fits really good in the case I know what you're wondering am I going to um, open the rest and put them in the case and the answer to that is no but I keep them in the package. The only other reason is this case, I'm a little disappointed. I feel like if I keep opening it, that's going to snap. So I must, must just display it. Try to keep that from breaking. Okay. Let's move on. This is the world's smallest Polaroid Instacam. Oh my gosh, it's also a keychain. And um, there's a banana on it somehow. I don't, okay, I don't, that doesn't go with it. Okay, it's a keychain. And, but look, I mean, seriously. It's a viewfinder you can look through. And what? There's a button. If you press it, picture comes out. Now, unfortunately, it's not really taking a picture. This is as good as they can get. I mean, I wish I had an instant camera this small, because I would take pictures of small things all the time, or I would just have it, and someone wasn't looking, I would take a picture of, of like, you know, something, you know, like a spy thing. I mean, someone's homework, I don't know. But, 
you, you, all you really can do is pretend. So this actually, unlike all of the other things the world's small has made, this one doesn't really work, which is kind of a bummer. So let's move on. Okay. So. This is the world's smallest stretch Armstrong. And he really works. I mean, you can stretch him. You can put him in impossible poses. It's, it's pretty cool. If you had one of these in the 70s, you will appreciate this. So, good stuff. This is the world's smallest G.I. Joe. And it really works because it's really an action figure with an accessory, in this case a pair of binoculars, field glasses, and he has lifelike hair. It really is lifelike too because, um, I mean, you're just like, wow. I, I mean, that's cool. So, beard, the hair, it's very lifelike. It's creepy. Next is Argus. World well, small as Army Man. And you've got your standard Army Man poses. This would be the guy, probably like the commander, he's pointing. He's like, let's go this way, guys. This is a mortar guy. He's got a mortar. He's putting a, a shell into it. This is a bazooka guy. This is a prone heavy machine gunner. Um, I never liked these when I was a kid because this is the one you couldn't stand up. He could only stay in that pose. Uh, he's marching with a bayonet. It's a little bit bent. But that's okay. This guy is... He's charging into battle. Um... This one is just kind of holding this. His looks like a Browning automatic rifle, and he's just kind of holding it, like he's you know ready to go. This one has got an M16. He's on the ground and he's shooting. Um, this one is firing in that classic firing a rifle pose. Looks like he's firing an M1 Garand. I mean, look at all the poses you get. Dang, I mean. I think this guy's actually throwing a grenade. I mean, not a bad deal. All these army men, all at one time. Okay, I'm already, I'm already forgetting if I if I showed you this stuff already or not. Did I show you the light bright? Did I show you this? Look. I mean, is that not amazing? Now, as you can see, I put the template in, but I put it in upside down, so. Um, the pegs don't line up, but I just put them in anyway. There's a little drawer to put more pegs in. And you even get more pegs and lots of templates. Some of them are blank. So you can use your imagination. It's the world's smallest light bright, and it's amazing. What else do we got in here? How about that? The world's smallest Gumby and Pokey. I have the classic, standard Gumby and Pokey. Now I have both. Great paint, great articulation. You can pose this exactly the way you can pose this. I think that's everything. Oh my gosh, I hope you enjoyed this. I, I like collecting these. I'm looking forward to getting more. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and please rate, comment, subscribe.
Until next time, bye.